Hey guys, welcome back to episode three, I think, of this whole lithium build project. This is probably the most important one. The last episode you built, you saw me build the battery, the 600 amp battery. If you want to see that, click up here because it's kind of important for this stage. But even if you are just going to buy a drop-in battery from say Renogy or Victron, Battleborn batteries for example, if you were to buy one of those you can still now follow along to this section where I'm adding all of the other components to the batteries to make it work. As I said in the kind of introductory video to this whole project, lithium itself is pretty simple to install. The biggest problem that you have to be aware of is the charging. You need to figure out where your chargers are coming from and for me that is engine, solar and shore power. You may have a generator, you may have wind, you might have um, like a watt and see, something that you tow behind you. No matter what it is, you need to kind of look at your system. So most charge controllers for solar and wind, and I guess also the towing generators as well, like the, the water generators, they all have a lithium mode, unless it's something really old. In which case, maybe update your, your system to, to have a, a newer, say a Victron MPPT or Renogy MPPT, something that has a lithium specific mode. That takes care of that. And so my system, that's already, I don't need to worry about that. I can just go onto the settings of my MPPT. For me, that's Victron. And I can actually just program it in for lithium. Where you have your problems is shore power and more so your alternator. Basically, because lithium can take so much power at one time, you can very easily get your alternator running at full speed constantly. And that is one sure way to completely destroy your alternator and also possibly just damage your batteries in general. There's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration as to how to deal with that. Um, and in this video, I'm going to talk about that. But first off, last week I showed you the batteries and how it's going to go from the batteries and where, where everything goes to next. So something that I am so excited about for some unknown reason is my distributors, my bus bars. Currently in my boat, there's a really weird system that I can't figure out even now after, I guess, three months of kind of looking at this boat and trying to see how the heck I'm gonna do this job. There's a lot of things that just make no sense. And this is gonna tidy all of that up. It's this guy. This is a Victron power in. Now there's two different versions of this. You can get a power in and you can get a distributor. The distributor is like twice this price and it has some flashy lights and it also allows you to add in some um, fuses automatically. However, you can just buy this, put in your own fuses and put um, and you've just saved yourself like, I don't know, 70 euros. The only thing that doesn't work is these lights. I don't really care about that, to be honest. Um, so yeah, this is incredible. You just take your negative, and your positive, you attach them straight to this. At the bottom here, you have space for four ins and outs, as well as a ground. And this, this ground is really good if you have something like an inverter. Um, yeah, that, that makes a huge difference to have that. Um, but yeah, just really, really, really happy with these. And in fact, I'm so happy I have two. Yeah, let me just show you the inside of one of them now, and then I'll show you how they go together. You just screw the lid off, and it reveals this right here. We have four fuses that I've put in myself. Um, you can put in whatever fuses you want, obviously. This is just really tidy. It's completely unnecessary. You can just do a typical positive and negative bus bar. Heck, you can attach it directly to your battery, do whatever you want. But this is just a really, really clean way to do it. And the most interesting way is these bars right here. What are they for, you might ask? Have your charger controller. It has two screws that they come off, as I just showed you. And then to add the two together, wait for this. Slide it over, put it down, and done! How incredible is that? I mean, if that's not worth buying it, I don't know what is. Obviously, it comes with all the washers and stuff. And we're done. So yeah, as you saw, they just link together super easy, and now I have this. Now, yes, it's a little bit big. It takes up maybe a lot more space than a traditional bus bar would. But this is so tidy. This comes in this end. You take these caps off. The power comes in there. And everything just feeds out of these. We have space for eight different 
loads. I only have five right now, but if I add a water maker or I have an extra charge controller or we add wind or we add any other thing, there's extra space here for expandability. And yeah, absolutely love these. Um, there's a really good video of how to turn these into what I've got them in and this, I'll link that down below because typically these don't come with fuses. You have to put the fuses in yourself. So link for that down below. So yes, that's the bus bars. Now I forgot to mention before the bus bars, I have a master switch on the positive end as well as a mega fuse coming straight off the batteries for the positive for positive run. And for the negative wire, I have um, something that this boat does not currently have, which is actually a shunt. I have a Victron smart shunt, um, which is all in this lovely little bag, also to install. That, that goes between the battery and the distributor that I just showed you. So we're back to the saga of the charging. So as I said, you need to be really careful with lithium when charging from shore power and also from your alternator. But there's two really main ways to get around this problem. The first is just you go out and you buy a specific lithium charger for the shore power. And for the alternator, there's also specific lithium alternators. I believe the most common one is Balmar, um, as well as some other things, but these are so expensive. Um, it's kind of hard to justify. Yes, you will get 100, 110, maybe 150 amps from your alternator, which is incredible. Um, but if you are like me and you get virtually all of your power from solar, then it's not really worth the thousand dollars plus that it costs to put these in, these these new alternators in. The second way is what I'm actually going to do. It's cheaper. It is definitely less efficient, and a lot of people are going to say, um, you know, you're buying lithium for the benefit of being able to charge quickly, and then you're kind of just putting a stranglehold on that by using this. But this is also the cheaper way, and I'm on a budget, so this is how it's going to work. Another Victron product. You think this is going to be sponsored by Victron? It is not, unfortunately. Um, we have a DC to DC charger. You can get any kind of just charger to do this. Um, I have chosen this one because it just links in so well with the rest of the system. Um, but this is a 30 amp charger. And how this operates is you take your shore power and your alternator and you run it through your starter battery. Not to your house battery, only to your starter battery. You then take two cables from your starter battery, you plug them in here, and then you take two cables from here and plug them into your lithium battery. And then you can go onto the app on your phone and choose exactly at what point or what voltage um, when the starter battery is full or 90% or whatever, that it then starts to trickle over to the lithium. Um, and you can set it as a lithium charge parameter so it doesn't overcharge, it doesn't damage anything. Again, it's not super fast and a lot of people are gonna be kind of annoyed at the idea of doing this, but this is, I don't know, like 10% of the cost as the alternative option. And this is probably for a more expensive unit. You could get a way cheaper DC to DC charger, maybe even 30 to 50 amps and still have so much more money left over. So if you're okay with that, if you're like me and you get most of your charge from solar or wind or whatever, then you're fine. Stick with something like this to save you some money. There is another option for the charging side of things, um, which was my intention and sort of still is if I can get it to work. And that is actually to have an inverter charger. So I need to buy an inverter. Um, I'm gonna be buying a Renogy 3000 watt inverter. I did wanna get a Victron just to stick with the system, but they are three times the price and it's kind of hard to justify. I know there's a lot of benefits of it and it kills me not doing it, but hey ho, Renogy is also a great product. So there's two different ways to do it. You can just buy an inverter or like what I'm wanting to do is buy an inverter charger. The reason I haven't bought it at this point is because they have been out of stock for maybe three months. and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to buy it. That's kind of the problem. With these inverter chargers, you can set those that they run the shore power into the inverter charger and then you have a lithium specific mode there. So it's like buying a specific product for charging, but it's also an inverter. So it's a two for one, um, which is kind of my plan. The actual DC to DC charger is mainly for the alternator, um, but it can also work for shore power. So. Okay, so the DC to DT charger is now mounted on the wall. Everything's looking great, and I just need to get some wires to plug it in whenever everything's ready to go. 
And that brings me to the final piece of the puzzle before the battery is ready to be dropped in. And that's the shunt. Now I've already showed you the shunt that's mounted on the box here, but there's so many different options that you can go for with a shunt. Um, because my well, almost my whole system is Victron, I've gone for a Victron shunt. Now there's three options within a Victron shunt. Um, first of which is what I've got, which is a Victron 712, and that comes with a little display. There's a second one, which is a Victron Smart Shunt, and that is the same unit as this. It just doesn't come with a display, and it's just Bluetooth. Um, and then the third option is a Lynx Shunt. Um, and as I've already showed you, my Lynx distributors, or my Lynx Parins, uh, which is my, my bus bars, the BMS, which is the Lynx version, just collect, connects directly to that. But it's like twice, if not three times the price as the alternative so that just wasn't an option i'm sure there's some really good features with that but for me that's just not in the budget it's really between for the majority of people i think between the shunt and the smart shunt both can use bluetooth just one has a display and that's really the only difference um and for ours for us and for well mainly for laura not having to have the, the app on her phone um just to be able to go over to the nav station and just click a button and see what percentage the battery is is the reason why we went for this system which is what i spent six hours doing yesterday so yesterday i actually tried to start this install as i showed you already it's mounted on the box and i have which i'll show you just now on the screen i've mounted the actual display perfectly into my dc panel which is just incredible how it fit in there perfect that doesn't ever happen so that's incredible and then all that needs done in a simple term is to run the cable from there back to the batteries. Well, yesterday I spent seven hours trying to do that. <laughs> so um, that's always the fun part. That's the first time I've had to run wires through the boat. Um, yeah, now I see why everyone hates it. Okay, so for running this cable, um, last night I have the actual battery monitor right here. This is it here. And literally this, I had three of these, one of them just screwed right out and it fit right in, which is great. And then it has just this ethernet cable. Like, Took me six hours to get from here to just here. The cable coming through here and it's gonna come right down in to the engine. This is the cable, you can just see it loose right there on the left. And it currently just goes right down beside the, the engine. I'm gonna tie it up to those cables that are on the floor down there and then just bring it right back. And then this is the cable here, which just comes straight in through here, which is really nice. And then this is where the batteries will be. But yeah, so that's now in. And the only other thing that you need to do is cut all of your wires. And I did this yesterday. Everything is cut and crimped. And hopefully I've got the measurements right. Again, it's super difficult to actually know how far I need to go without having these batteries already in there. And I know people will be like, you should have just waited, but the less time that I can have the batteries off, the better, because I've got a fridge on and it's, yeah. We really don't want to have no power in the boat for a long period of time, so everything is ready to go. Hopefully, these are all cut to the right size. But yeah, that's us for this video. Next time, we're actually gonna get this all installed, hopefully today, tomorrow, and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything fits. So come back for that, where it's the, the big switch on hopefully with no problems. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later, bye.